Rinchan, the son of a Buddhist Ladakhi chief, moved into Kashmir Valley along with his followers and captured the throne of Kashmir in 1320. The Kashmir Valley had an overwhelming Hindu population and he expressed his desire to convert to the dominant Shavite tradition of Hinduism. But the priests of the kingdom opposed his request because he had just killed their Hindu Prime Minister Ramchandra. Instead, now he converted to Islam and became the first Muslim ruler of the valley. He adopted the Muslim name of Sadruddin. This started the long process which ultimately led to Islamic Kashmir by the beginning of the 14th century. Kashmir had remained Buddhist for a very long period in history and the valley played a major role in the spread of Dhamma into Central Asia and China. Before answering the question of why and how the Buddhist Kashmir became Islamic, let's first explore how Buddhism was introduced into Kashmir. Buddhism was first introduced into the Kashmir Valley in the 3rd century BC by Emperor Ashoka of the Mauryan Empire based in Patliputra. This was the direct result of the Third Buddhist Council, which was held under the patronage of Emperor Ashoka. During the council, it was decided that the kingdom will send Buddhist missions to different parts of the world to spread the words of Buddha. Monk Majhantika was deputed to spread the Dhamma in Kashmir and Gandha region in the northwest of the country. For the next several centuries, Kashmir and Gandhar remained illuminated with the yellow robes of Buddhist monks. Ashoka constructed more than 500 monasteries and stupas for the Buddhist monks of Kashmir. Kalhan in his Rastarangani mentions that Ashoka built Srinagri, a beautiful city in the valley. This city was situated near present Srinagar, the capital of Jammu and Kashmir. During the later Mauryan period, several monks belonging to the Sarvastivada sect of Theravada went towards North India. They migrated from Magadh and settled in Mathura, Gandhar and Kashmir regions. They became known as Sarvastivadins because of their fundamental doctrine of Sarvasti, which means all things exist. Kashmir was their main center of activities. Sanskrit was the language of their scriptures. The Sarvastivadins had their own canon in Sanskrit. The death of Ashoka led to the collapse of modern power over Gandhar and adjoining areas in northwestern India. Seeing the opportunity, the Greeks invaded and established their settlements in the northwestern parts of India, which were called the Indo-Greek kingdoms. About 30 Indo-Greek kings ruled over Afghanistan and northwestern India. Out of them, Menander or King Melinda, who ruled during the 2nd century BC, was regarded as the greatest and most powerful ruler. He converted to Buddhism and played a major role in the spread of Dhamma. Later, after ruling for three decades, he handed over his kingdom to his son and became a Buddhist monk. He is also famous for his discussion with the Buddhist sage Nagsena. He held the discussion with the Buddhist monk at Harvan, which is situated only 12 kilometers from present day Srinagar. Harvan was later also the site of the fourth Buddhist council held during the first century CE. Kashmir witnessed the golden period of Buddhism during the Kushan period. Kanishk was the greatest of the Kushan rulers. He ruled during the 1st century CE from his capital city of Purushpur, which is now called Peshawar. Kanishk was a great patron of Buddhism and occupies an important place in the history of Buddhism. He also patronized the 4th Buddhist Council, which was held in Kashmir. Famous Chinese pilgrim Xuanzang says that Kanishk came to Kashmir to attend the council and he built a Buddhist monastery in Kashmir for the accommodation of the Buddhist monks. He also gave the kingdom of Kashmir as a gift to the Buddhist Sangha. During the Kushan period, Buddhism was the predominant religion in Kashmir. Kashmir became the center of Mahayana Buddhism and played a major role in the spread of Dhamma to Central Asia and China. The first decline of Buddhism started after the end of Kushan period. The first major threat to Dhamma came from Mirkul, who was a Hun king. He ruled between 515 to 540 AD and destroyed several monasteries and massacred the Buddhist populations. But he was not able to destroy the Dhamma completely as Buddhism again flourished after the end of his rule. By the 8th century, Kashmir has become an important political power in India during the rule of the Karpota dynasty. After absorbing 
the adjoining kingdoms of Rajapuri, Takshila, and several parts of modern-day Punjab in Pakistan. Karkota dynasty ruled the Kashmir Valley between the 7th and 9th centuries. Lalita Ditya, one of the most famous kings of the Karkota dynasty, built several Hindu temples and Buddhist monasteries in the valley, including the famous Martan Temple. Karkota kings were devotees of Lord Shiva. Buddhism lost its predominance in Kashmir during this period to Shaivism, which was now the predominant religion of the valley. The Karkota dynasty was followed by Uppal dynasty of the 9th and 10th centuries, and this was followed by Lohar dynasty, which ruled between 1003 and 1320 AD. The Lohar dynasty proved to be the last Hindu dynasty in the Kashmir Valley. They successfully defended Kashmir from repeated Islamic invasions. However, during the later phase of Lohar dynasty, Kashmir faced economic decline, which also affected the Buddhist monastic institutions. In the 13th century, the Kashmir Valley was predominantly Hindu, and now a very small population of Muslim converts also started to emerge in the valley, with Buddhism surviving in small pockets in Kashmir.